The simulated universe is going to be the end game content for mostly the entire Honkai Star Rail player base. This is a place where we're going to be able to get mats to level up our units, light cones to make them even stronger, and even star jades. I'm going to use this video just to go over some tips and tricks that I've seen and to give an overall summary of what to expect. Leg out. What the hell is this? So the simulated universe is our end game content and currently you only need one set of four characters. So starting out, pick the four characters you like and level them. It's not to say that you shouldn't level up other characters because some of the worlds require a different elemental weakness to get down to a boss fight and you might unlock another character through the summoning. So currently you only need one set of four characters. So to unlock the simulated universe, you'll get access to it from a side quest from her in the main storyline. The tutorial part of that simulated universe content is pretty easy. It's meant to show you some of the basic mechanics, what's going on, how it plays. When you unlock Trailblazer 14, you'll unlock the full experience of the simulated universe. When you unlock it, this is when you get access to the current score, her to store, the ability tree, the index, the whole thing. When you're playing through stages, each stage might have a chance to change, and this might just be the environment, the way that the layout is played, and maybe some of the side enemies, depending if you go through occurrences or boss fights or elites. The actual overworld takes no stamina, and you can retry as often as you like. An important thing about the simulated universe is to make sure that you have your weekly score finish it completed before the reset, which is typically Monday, 4 a.m. on the server time. There's a little block that says this parade will end. Make sure that you have these completed. Even if you can't beat that current world, you can drop back to another world if you want to fully complete, or you can try to work your way through another difficult world. In reference to the scoring system, it is a racking up, it is accumulative, which is a big word for Elmo. It is not, you must complete this number, like 3,500 or 5,000 in one run. So you could get 100 in one run and then 300 in the next run and they'll add up. So getting in here and trying to complete your, cur your current score to make sure that it's maxed out is imperative. So currently as of launch, there's only six worlds with each world having a boss at the end. Depending on the level of difficulty and depending on the world that you're on dictates how many stages that there are. And starting from world three, there's a set difficulty. World three and four will have five difficulties, while five and six only have four. Once you defeat a world boss, you get access to a Herda Bond, which can be used inside of a Herda Store. The one thing here is free to play, pay to win, doesn't matter. Do not buy the summoning tickets. What you want to do is you want to buy one of the light cones, either for your main DPS or your tank or your healer, preferably your DPS, and level it with the Super Imposer. Do not purchase the summoning tickets. You will need to complete weekly point rewards for more access to Herda Bonds. Once you complete the worlds for the first time, those first time rewards go away. And unless they do some kind of world incredible reset, once you complete the world, the only way to get more Herda Bonds is by completing your weekly score. The Index is a great way to read lore, look at all the blessings that you have collected, and you can see the question marks for the ones you haven't collected, as well as look at all the curios that you can get. It's a great way to get free jades anytime that you enter into a world and you get access to a new blessing or a new curio it'll have like a little book on the top right side in a little circle that means you've never activated that blessing or that curio and using it will allow you to get that buff and then once you complete or you do not complete you will get free jade for that and last but not least it could be its own video the ability tree will be your path to more damage defense hp and various other stats the biggest thing to look out for here on the ability tree is, like I said before, since it's no stamina to enter, you could kind of, sort of, just farm ability tree points, giving your characters the added bonus of damage or access to new paths. So now that you're going to get into selecting your world, you're going to click on the world that you want to enter, whether you've cleared it before or whether it's your first time. Looking at the very top, it's going to say points on clearance. 
for example, world one says 800. So let's say you get halfway through the world and you perish, you're gonna get access to 400 points. And remember those are cumulative. So jumping right back in and completing it halfway is the same thing, right? The same race halfway twice. You also see the first rewards clear, which if they have a check mark on them, you won't have access to get those even if you clear it. The extra drops are just nice little things that you get from either the domain of the elite or domain of the boss. Again, like I said before, it's it's honestly worth it to jump back into these worlds even after you've completed your full weekly score to try to get some of those extra small drops when you're farming, when you're out of Trailblazer energy. So once you click on the next screen, you'll see the recommendations for your team level, the recommended types that you need, the boss enemies, main encounter, and your downloaded initial characters. So the recommended level, I'll tell you now, there are content creators who are demolishing world six with free to play characters that are level 50. So by no means does the recommended team level is a necessity. You could even, it'll give you a warning, like you're playing Dark Souls or something, but you just click right through it. The recommended types is again, what are the major enemies weakness? Take that into account. So you're gonna select your four characters that you wanna bring. Later on, once you get to what's called a respite, you have the opportunity, depending on the world, to download another character, which I'll explain here in a little bit, but you're gonna launch, you're gonna click your characters, and then you're going to launch your simulated universe. And this screen alone, you could absolutely make an entire video to go over each and every single path. But essentially what paths are, they are added bonuses slash summons. There's seven currently, but you won't have access to all seven until you complete a few more of the worlds. Once you have access to all seven, that's when things start to get a little bit spicy in terms of how does your team composition work? Are you rocking shield comp? Are you doing follow-up attacks? Are you doing speed? Are you trying to freeze all the opponents and or the boss the entire time? And again, this could absolutely be its own video, but just a TLDR, Typically what I've seen over in a lot of content creators as well as on the Reddit and the Discord is that the preservation and the abundance are the two most used. And that's because the preservation has access to defense and offensive and the abundance has access to cleansing and healing. This could be its own long video, but this is, I'll try to make it as simple as possible. What this is, is they're basically summons that come with stats. So. Once you first get into it, you can only choose one of these paths. So I recommend you experiment. I found a lot of success in the remembrance, which froze my opponents. But this is where things, again, they get kind of crazy. So when you choose a path, it'll give you a path buff. For example, the preservation gives you access to increase the damage absorption of shields received by characters by 10%. And it also increases the chance of blessing or preservation to appear. So when I click the path of resonance, it'll give me access to an ability once I reach 100% or 100 points in energy and you get energy by attacking the enemy, getting hit, healing, using skills, etc. So as you're going through, if I activate the preservation and I'm going through my world, I want to activate three blessings of the preservation to be able to use the path of resonance. So the small version to say that is if I'm using Path of Resonance, I want to unlock blessings for that. That's the only way that your path will unlock and then you can use the resonance to do the damage, to heal, to put on the debuff. Furthering down the road, once you start to unlock more in your ability tree, you will get access to what's called resonance formation. And it essentially is taking your Path of Resonance, which is your summon, and then you upgrade it to do something else. You could add more damage, more healing, you could debuff cleanse. Uh, when I was using the Remembrance, I had access to something called the Frozen River. So instead of freezing the enemy for one turn, it did it for two turns. The only way to get access to that is to continuously select the blessings for the exact path that you're on. The formations only activate when you get six and then 10. So six blessings and then 10 blessings. In world one, two, and three, you might not have the luxury, depending on the curios, depending on the blessings, you might not have access to getting the formations. 
but five and six, you sh might, I was about to say should, you might be getting access to that. So when you select the path, it becomes your main side summon. However, you can only choose one, but that doesn't mean that you should not choose blessings that aren't specific to the path you chose. There are meta comps that have a combination of certain individual blessings. Just because you chose the preservation does not mean you won't get access to the hunt blessings. When you defeat a boss or an enemy of any kind, you will get access to, depending on the curio, three different blessings and they range in one, two or three star. Three star being the best, two star being the medium, one star being kind of the generic. So you know what characters you want to download, you know the world you want to dominate, just because it's baby girl, baby mama doesn't mean we're not going to get in there and wax that sh So, we've activated, we're in the world now, what do we do? We're doing this one live, but typically every time you start one of the worlds, there should be one or two destructible items in each of like the small areas. When you destroy you're going to get access to what's called cosmic fragment they are the currency only applicable when you are playing inside the simulated universe if i go and press m for my map it's going to show me the path that i'm currently taking now again this says divergence that because that means i have access to ch choosing either an occurrence a elite a combat fight same thing with this one i have two options but then i'm going to get to the elite which is well, i have to fight the boss the respite is the place where you get to enhance your blessings you restore hp and you can even reset characters there is an ability tree ability that gives you access to reviving your characters as well so this is where you can revive them and switch out characters and the level since we're bringing four characters you could bring a fifth one and just sub them out for whenever you him or her whenever you get to the boss fight so something that i recommend players do is press the m button on the keyboard or accessing your map from within the simulated universe so that you could see the path that you're on the upcoming content so domains specifically refer to the level in which you're at so there's only a few enemies per either one enemy or a few enemies or no enemies because it's an occurrence or respite but each domain handles it a different way there is domain for combat which is means there's enemies littered about there is domain elite which means that there is a big boss not the final boss but a big boss character there is the domain respite which is typically after an elite fight where you get access to two different healing tubes and a skill technique tube which will heal your health as well as give you your skill back also in the respite you have access to a downloader where you can download one of your stocked characters that you didn't bring with the first four and then you can also once you unlock your ability tree ability You'll get access to having a revive which is great for later games but looking at this map i can see where i'm going if it says domain divergence it means that you are being given two paths it might be an occurrence it might be an occurrence it might be two of the same thing but it's just giving you the option but trailing down you could see depending on the world that you're in uh what you're coming up to next the second button at the top is the blessings that you currently have. So you can click through to see what you have access to. Your effect buffs, this is basically your path. This is what's happening um, and what you have access to. So if you look at the screen, it says I have zero preservation blessings already obtained. So I don't get any of the following. And then the last one's your curios. So now that we're finally gonna talk about blessings and curios. So blessings are essentially your buffs. Now, depending on the path that you choose, there is a chance that they are more frequent. It doesn't mean that they're guaranteed. Just like I talked about previously, to activate your resonance, you want to be able to get three of the one that you went for. So uh, currently looking at the screen, I have elation, elation, and remembrance. 
None of these are applicable to the path that I chose, so I need to make the determination if do I want to gamble and just move on to the next one, or do I want to reset blessings, which this is a ability, part of the ability tree that you get. So, again, if I read each blessing, and it says increases the rate of follow-up attacks by 26%, I need to look at my characters. None of my characters do follow-up attack. All right, and I'm not doing elation. Next one. After characters launch a follow-up attack, increases the speed for 60% for one turn. So elation obviously starts to come with the follow-up attacks, and I don't have access to any of those. So this blue one, this is a two-star. Ultimate experience sentimentality. After an enemy receives ice damage, enemies adjacent also receive damage equal to 20%. I have no ice damage and neither is my path. So I'm gonna roll it, gamble. Okay, so I have now abundance, remembrance, and destruction. So still none of these are the one that I currently have. If I remember, I think I picked up the destruction. But regardless, uh, let's say I didn't like these two. If I click the abundance, now my Natasha heals for 12% more when it's incoming to the character. So I get access to a blessing. I get one of three blessings every single time an enemy is defeated. And depending on the level of the enemy and if it's a boss or it's an elite, depends on how uh, how high rarity that blessing will be. And again, this is when, I've said this a lot, but this is when it starts to get crazy. Because again, you're looking at what are you using for your blessing and what are you using for your curios. So specifically for curios, you will get access to those after you defeat the elite enemies only, unless you join the world with a, a curio activated. But uh, we run to the same thing here. So I have my fragments up here. I'm gonna hit resets. Ooh, look at that, all two stars now. Um, increases weaknesses, break efficiency by 30% is incredible. Something to talk about here as well. You can also upgrade these using the cosmic fragments. So once you get to a certain character, Herda, uh, during the respite, you'll be able to enhance some, if not all, depending on your currency that you currently hold, which is why it is important to break any box that you see. And then again, make that gamble, make that determination. If you want to use to reset blessings, if you want to use save these, because for example, there's a curio that every 100 cosmetic fragments you hold gives you access to 16% more damage. So the more that I use, the more that I go for my specific path, as I look through here, I have, uh, I have two blessings right now but the path that I'm on is preservation. So none of these affect directly for me to unlock the path of resonance. So that's why it's not activated yet. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope I at least helped one person out, try to understand the simulated universe the best way that I can. Look out for my next video. It should be me clearing world one. Not really the biggest thing in the world, but I want to definitely do them in order. You can't see me, but guess what? pointing at the screen you are valued and you are appreciated and what happens when i press this yucking